How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Blue Shifting. Welcome back to Mav Love Monday, where I am. Uh, I remember I left last episode saying, I'm going to think about this and decide what choice I'm going to make. I'm going to tell you the honest truth. I didn't think about it very much. Uh, <laughs> I think I had a pretty interesting week and just totally forgot that I left it hanging on this. So I've had a quick think <laughs> right here. It's essentially a choice between one and three. I just, I'm pretty sure I don't want to go number two. So, and again, it's still guesswork. I'm guessing that number one is like towards the Yui, which is interesting. And it definitely feels like that's like the canon one because it feels like our, our boy Yuya is like hyper focused on her for sure. But I'm going to follow my heart and my guts and my just call what it is. It's just just going with the flow here. I've decided I'm going to take number three. Don't tell me. So don't hate me. <laughs> we'll see what ends up happening. Maybe this is a day, like a point of no return. Maybe I'll change my mind. But for now, let's just go with this. Don't tell me. No, zero chance. She's a superior officer. Oh, wait, though, it is her. <laughs> so interesting. <laughs> sure, VG is the kind of guy who tends to think with his lower head, but the risk doesn't begin to come close to the reward. Even if that's what he's aiming for, he wouldn't come at a target without a foolproof plan. She spots him and its mission failed. There's absolutely no chance of extraction. So let's check out Teresa and Stella's cottage first. Oh, <laughs> it's like, it's not a real choice. Dang it. Made all that bluster for nothing. Hey, it's me, Yuya. Anybody inside? Anyone there? Sounds like Stella to me. It's Yuya. There's something I need to tell you. No, it's more of a general warning. No, heard a suspicious individual has been set prowling or seen prowling around. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, this one's a little closer to home. Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, now you know, so please be careful. ありがとう。直接的な期待の破壊は極力避ける。それが貴様の提案を許可する条件だったね。ああ、<笑><笑> 覚悟の上での行動の間違いだろう。Oh wait, did he use this to squirrel her into being in the photo shoot? Oh no. まあいいじゃないですか。どう注意。あれでブリッジス勝利が何かをつかみ、結果としてXFJ計画がうまくいくのなら、あの程度の損害我が社としては安いものです。I mean, yeah, but it's from the company point of view, sure. Military-wise, it was a pretty, uh, crappy move. しかし、いいものを見せてもらった。あの状況で致命的損害を避けた攻撃ができるとは、タイプゼロといい、高村注意といい、素晴らしい。Very <laughs> oh, impressive, actually, if that's the case. So, because it, like, she, like, pinned slash impaled one of the TSF, so he was just giving her crap and flack about it. But if she managed to do it without critically damaging it, aka it was like minimal repairs necessary to fix, that shows a level of craft and a capability that far exceeds somebody who's just able to beat up ace pilots in their TSFs, right? Because it's it's it, it, it when you're dealing with like a full fledged weapon of war, like a sword, and you're going into combat against people who are also wielding, well, maybe not weapons of war per se but like certainly damaging weapons if utilized and she was able to not only neutralize them but was able to do so in a way that didn't actually do that much damage that does show a insane level of precision and skill yeah <laughs> Oh, it's also the truth. Oh. 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 
許されるとは思っていないが、詫びることだけはさせてほしい。ユイ is pretty cool, isn't she? Like, not even like, ah,、oh, she's a fun, like, cool, like, a、uh, female character, but it's like, she's genuinely just a cool character. She actually channels a lot of, like, Maya energy, if I'm honest. Oh, Yoshima Show, your Chui, so you know. Tashka, ne. Orena, ni tote kitaiwa kodomo mitai na mundus. Dakara, Kawaii kitai ni anna koto sarea, muka para no hitsmo tachimasu. Desgane, Chui ga nan no tameni asokoma de yatanoka. Nan no tameni disco o tanoka. Skuna ktomo, Orena wa wa katte masu. Right. こういう時は日頃の言動がものを言うんです。注意がどんだけ自分の仕事にかけてるかみんな見てますから。<笑>自信持って行きましょうよ、注意。だいたいハイネマンのおっさんもモーニングの連中も納得してのことでしょ。Vincent just he's so good he just knows he just knows what to say every time。確かにその通りだが。だったら、俺ら整備兵も自分の仕事をやるだけです。一秒でも早く、こいつらを試験に復帰させるためにね。Good man. Good man. <sighs> ここから先、私はどうすればいいのか。あれ以来、ブリッジ少尉は変わった。それは良かったのだが、私が嫌われるのは構わない。だが、私の行動が彼らを傷つけ。Interesting. So she's like, I don't mind if people don't like me, but if I'm like causing them like suffering, I can't stand that. Why are you talking to your watch? Okay. You know, I was just about to say, like, I wonder if that's just her dad's. And it's like, yeah, that, that pretty much spells it out right there. No, I, I really don't think you should. Sound of rustling leaves. Is that coming from the thicket outside? Uh oh. Uh oh. And now we're in a submarine. レイの駒が想定通りに動きましたわざわざターゲットと組ませた会員があったというものです OK OK so this is like seems to be part of that like narrative about like like the weird like Japanese officer who like brought them something like special and like but now we're like in a submarine talking about a target it's like now it's starting to seem really like serious so it's like is this an actual thing or is this a red herring that's like Really going for the red in the herring part of it. The Saxon no impeni hokorobi on either. Oh, Omotemukiniwa, Kanzen ni Tsujo nimu no hunchus. Joko ni gimo motsmonoa, Hitorimo ribasen. Kekona kotoba. Samaga you no nanoka, Shikan shita muno zoro in nanoka. Zen shato moshagetai to Korodesna, Kosha des. 後方の連中はいずれも似たようなものです。We've been talking about that. Like, haven't I been complaining about that the whole time? Like, kind of like the, the weird perspective everyone seems to have. It's like, because they're not in the front lines, it's really not. Like, they're, they're, like, they're so focused on like, the little things and, the, and a lot of the politicking. It feels like they're disconnected from what it really means to be out in the front. At least Yui seems to have an appreciation for it, but even then. <laughs> ここで確実に抑えるいいなはっお任せくださいオッケーでよ俺らにそこまでやらせといて結局やはりさっきの方が良かったもう一回とか言いやがってさオッケー So wait We didn't have anything else about BG and his creeping or Or anything like that? I could have sworn it was leading up to some kind of like faded, like, etchy encounter of some kind. Like, I'm a little shocked that we're just suddenly here, but okay, I'll take it. You don't say. Cool story. Wait, 
Did it skip? Like, is there something cut out because this is like a like the the revised version, and like in order to make it like accessible to the West, they had to cut out stuff. I I, I understand why they sometimes do that, but there's a difference between like like cutting out like the like or like blurring like the more extreme parts, and then just flat out hard cutting it. If that's what they did, I would like to know. Because we might, if it's going to go to that length, we might need to look for a restoration patch. Because, like, there's only so much. Like, if it's cutting out entire scenes, that's usually not kosher. Like, it's something, at the very least, I usually opt into those types of scenes and just cut it out myself. Because I can determine what I'm comfortable showing on the channel. And I'm, I'm probably, I'm pretty, like, what do you call it? prudence when it comes to that kind of stuff. I usually tend to cut rather than leave in like something that's super on the line, but at the same time, like if we're missing entire scenes, that's just silly, because I at least can talk about those scenes, right? So, okay, please let me know. If there was a scene there that was absolutely just completely just removed for some reason, please let me know. <laughs> Well, Captain Olsen is bossing all of us around, just in different ways. Easy, enough is enough, you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah? Ah oh, crap, he's not gonna stop being anytime soon, is he? Okay, sure, cuz... What's what's the what what is, I don't even know what he's complaining about. Whoa, you don't say. Cool story. Possibly yes. Oh, so he did go after her and he got caught. So maybe that's all it was. Like it didn't actually just show us that. That's what you get for hiding half your face among the thicket of a tropical plant. Hope the pain was worth it. Hey, was that the same clothes you were wearing earlier? Looks stylish. When did you get changed, though? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. That's nighttime tropical camouflage. Ma. Man is simply obsessed. Italian breeds some bona fide horn dogs. And it's not Italian, it's, it's guys. <laughs> Ladies should be gathering soon. Maybe it'd be a good idea to give him another warning or something. I doubt VG's efforts would lead him to victory against the Eastern Bloc, but he's shameless enough he might win a couple skirmishes here and there against the West. <laughs> well, whatever. Now I did what had to be done. I'll wash, I've washed my hands of this whole affair. VG's battlefield gains are not my business. Hi, Stella. I will have you know that look at aprons looking good isn't a trope. It's actually a thing. And they look great on guys too. <laughs> I think I, I remember I went cooking uh at a with a with a with like a family friend and they had a tradition of like everyone in the house gets like an apron to use and they all cook as a as a family but they always had spares in case there were guests and one of these days i was a guest at the at the time and so they tossed me an apron and i helped them prepare this big dinner with everybody and there's nothing more fun than just you know getting to work in the kitchen and not feeling like and, and it's, it's weird because like an apron you feel like I, I can just cook normally right but then you put on an apron and you're like oh my gosh why have i never done this before it's like it's weirdly like comfy and it lets you kind of just feel more like I, it, maybe it's a it's a it's a, like a mindset type thing, but whatever it is, I've always enjoyed that. And so I don't know why I haven't ever thought about that. I haven't got myself an apron in a long time, even though I do a lot of cooking. I just haven't thought about it. I mean, it's not something you go and casually buy at like a Walmart. Usually nowadays, you'd probably have to order one or hand make them or something. I think I know what I'm gonna do after this though. Probably gonna go look for an apron. Oh, 
<笑>例えばスタイルだ。ステラ、<笑><笑><笑><笑> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The squall of tea, I assume. <laughs> I would be rolling on the floor. Oh, I see what happened. Excellent situational assessment there, Stella. VG hadn't made it to Cell's cabin when I went to warn her. With his guard down, he expected everything to go his way. Sadly for him, Stella was on high alert, ready to pour boiling hot water on the poor Italian friend. It's gotta be where the red patch on his face comes from. Well, at least it passes for a big sunburn. Uh, oh man. It's, I wonder, so they're in the Caribbean. So I wonder if they're gonna go in a Caribbean style barbecue or if they're gonna end up opting because it's probably more familiar to like the, the, the writer of this series, the Hawaiian pig roast. Barbecue? Barbecue is open grill. So, Barbecue is open grill. Hey, it's about the spirit of the thing. He's right, it's simply a certain something missing. Taste itself is not bad, but you have to account for the subtle difference between how synthetic food stuff looks and its flavor. And try as I might, I can't get used to it. It's just not the not in the cards for me. Exactly. I think it also has to do a lot with how much hard, how hard you work. I remember um, one of my favorite memories actually, because uh, I grew up being able to go camping and spending a lot of time outdoors. Something I still love, but sadly, I'm not able to do as much as I used to. But I remember one time when I went on my first rock climbing camping trip. Um, I think I think if I remember correctly, there's a place out west called City of Rocks that we drove several hours to get to. Uh, but the nice thing about it is that like it's a it's a kind of like a one of those really like popular rock climbing areas, but mostly because it has a lot of rock formations that are varying heights and difficulties. So like, if you are somebody who's really pushing yourself and has a lot of good strength and skill, you can find something that can challenge you there. But also if you're a brand new or hardly ever done it before, there are rock formations that you can climb and enjoy. And it's really cool because it's like, unlike something you have artificially inside like a, like a rock gym or something, it's, it's you get to have the experience of actually climbing rocks, but also having that like availability of just a different like, uh, difficulty level. So I remember we spent all afternoon rock climbing and that was really fun, especially because I got to climb up to one, like it was an easier but really tall structure that I was able to get to the top of and got some good pictures. And then I remember after uh, climbing all day, like I was exhausted and got back to camp and my mom had made uh, like, like I, she called it hot rock pizza, but we made it on a grill. Uh, essentially, she just got this like dough and she put sauce and vegetables and cheese on top and like baked it on a grill rather than in an oven and like just prepared it. Like, I guarantee you, if you had served it up at home or or tried to put it next to even like fast food pizza, it would not have done so well. Because I remember the, the, the dough was really tough. Um, it's part of the nature of like the way it was baked and also because it had to like be able to stay on a grill and not like completely collapse in on itself. So it might've been like a pre-cooked kind of dough, but like when you pre-cook and then take it somewhere, it definitely doesn't have much elasticity. So it was very chewy, very dense. Uh, the toppings are fine, but it was still for some reason, I, I think it was the atmosphere. I think it was the hard work I've been doing put together, but it was one of the best tasting pizzas I've ever had. But I also was aware as I ate it that it was by far not one of the best pizzas I'd ever had. But the but at that time, it was like heaven on a plate. So yeah, I think presentation, surrounded by friends, and like the stuff you've been doing leading up to the meal makes a huge difference in how good a meal can feel. Makes sense.
特にユーヤとローウェル軍曹は食料自給率 100% のアメリカから来て間もないからまだ合成食材の味には慣れていないかもしれないけど。Oh yeah, so hard for the Americans who have grown up on good food that's actually real as opposed to synthetic. 気の持ち方一つで美味しさも変わると思えば、これからの食事にも楽しみを感じられるようになるわよ。Stella's adorable. She's like, she's like, she's got some big sister energy going. 確かにな。そういうもんかも。Maybe, yeah. Hmm. これも新しい発見ってやつかまさかステラがこんな家庭的な一面を持っていたとは I'll be darned. Now I have to rethink your nickname. それでねタリさんも賛成してくれたから今支度を Oh yeah, better stop the fire なんだよ人がせっかく気ぃ利かせてやったのにその態度は下手に出てれば突き上がりやがって今の声 Yeah, here she comes, the Tasmanian devil herself ああ、一体何の支度を手伝っていたんだか。せっかくいい話だったのに。たく、誰だよ、あいつを話し飼いにしたのはよ。今後の撮影のためにも、果実の遺恨を水に流し、親睦を深めておくように。I can't take this guy's aviator seriously. タイの要請をくれぐれも遵守するように。なおこれに従い、今日は東西合同による食事会を催す。いいな、要請の順守。ああ。忘れるな。Come on, man. There's time and place to run wild and official get together is not it. ここに来たのは命令に従っているだけ。肉は食べない。No, you don't. Hi, i n a 別に無理に食えなんて言ってないだろすぐ隣るのは、心が弱いから。She's right. <laughs> なんだと t e r e s a Do I have to tackle you myself? Oh, look at that smirk, though. <laughs> oh, there. Not my wildest dreams would I have expected Inia to talk back. Back at the hangar, she clammed up completely, no matter what tiny threw her way. Yeah. Yeah. これは何かの罠なのか何が目的だわ、罠おいおい、何言ってんだ ?Easy to put myself in her shoes.Fear enveloping your mind as you're dragged into the middle of a crowd against your will, the anchor welling up beside you as a complete stranger humiliates you in public.Maybe that Chris、uh, would, would, would have expected, would have experienced it firsthand. どうやらロシア人は他人が信用できないようね。かわいそうに。Okay, that's a very passive aggressive way to do this. Stella. Scotia, a shoey to umaku yaro to a moanai no casera. What does that you are mele da caracoconir? Mele? Anata no issue a dona no? So let me cheese. So rendeva. Issue a mozcota sura yurusarena no casera. Okay, so Stella, being normally very chill and on the level, seems to have a, a bit of a personal beef. Maybe it has to do with the. Cultural past that Russia's had because it's not been very nice to its neighbors. Tashka Kisama Sweden Jin Dotana. See, so it's a Kanke in Janeka Nanika or Takuran de Yobiose Nankseo Tskete Bato Srikotoga Kisama Tachino Ish to Yuakeka. Can everyone just shut up? Get out of here, all of you. Like, I feel like. I'm like, look, Stella, VG, you're almost as bad as Tanya now. Get her out of here and just, just scoot, okay? Fetch off, alright? Stella, you're the one. Okay. 
そりゃお前バカ騒ぎして飲み食いするだけだろうがなあそうだ寂しい奴らだな素直に楽しめないなんてさ I don't know you guys feel like you started all this I mean Inya was being a bit aggressive but I'm guessing she was mostly responding to you guys please let me do the talking Sappi she huh Is that a re reaction just now? If I'm not wrong, the last time we met. I thought Inya called out to me because I looked sad, but it seemed that wasn't the case. Couldn't have been her. Her reaction betrays she isn't familiar with the concept, but that makes no sense. Okay, everyone, calm down. Let's discuss this later. Yes! Yes, I am! Uh, come on, just hear me out. I can feel it. Tadisa is about to blow a gasket. Better choose my words real careful. She's gonna fly off the handle. <sighs> cool. Yuya almost, almost was a right. Almost pulled it off, but then just clammed up randomly at the land. <sighs> that just annoyed me. Waters near the Guadalupe base, West Indies Archipelago. どうしてこんなことに俺整備兵だぜ A 氏じゃねえのに Yeah, you tell me いや絶対そうだって見てみろ女はビーチバレー野郎はボートレースじゃねえかよ I don't know Maybe because they saw how creepy some of us are being Not all the women though eh, There's Kriska and a straight, straight lace queen battling up on the same boat Good chance nobody ever wanted to team up with uh, Nobody else wanted to team up with them. Good, goodness knows why wouldn't. Wait, Kriska and Yui. Oh, that is interesting. <laughs> you know, it does kind of feel like we've been put to pasture, doesn't it? <laughs> Talk about pot calling the kettle black. いやーストラたまんねえなあオペコたちも個性的な一品をお持ちだわいや、yeah, pretty good、like、you can see all that much from this distance anyway it's not a compliment to spare,、uh, to spare for the poor tiny huh yeah <laughs> いやいやあれはあれでまあ一部の方々には需要があるだろうな<laughs> just sh sh shut your face She's, you're not wrong, but still. <laughs> okay, this looks fun. This looks enjoyable. This looks cute. I like this. This is great. <laughs> ah, that's fun. I love it. It's, it's, it's absolutely the fan service, but come on. It, fan service has its place, and that's enjoyable. Bro, what the F? That's, wait. <gasps> Yay! Hi. Wave. <laughs> Inya's over there. Oh, onto da. Yeah, sorry, ni stemo hageshkatana. Saki no dada kopuri. Sugo de da nanda te itemo. Yapari mada kodomo da na. I imagine she's. I wonder. That's weird that they split them up, you know? I imagine getting Inya and Kriska to separate is pretty tough. Ain't that the truth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm almost wondering if this is intentional. Inya. I wonder if she has a reason for hating the sea. Mm. Gotta like how she just wields Russia loud and proud on her swimsuit. これは一体どういうことかねなぜ、勝利はこれほどまでに取り乱すのかああ、uh, I, I don't like you, Captain Olsen。まあ、両名ともに基礎訓練において水泳技術はマスターしています。ですが、それは、屋内施設でのこと。Hmm. 実際には、本物の海を間近に見ること自体が初めての経験です。当然、記録映像や戦術機のモニター模試であれば、話は別ですが。Okay. 
You're one to talk. その通り。初めての海を威風する子供と同様。おそらくシェスチナ少尉にとって、あのようなボートで海にこみ出ることは、想像を絶する恐怖なのでしょう。うん、なるほど。帰国の状況を鑑みれば、それも致し方ないだろう。いや、むしろ同情に値する。だが各競技の人員振り分けと組み合わせはすでに決定済みだしかも君ここで棄権しては機体の定員割れを補うために助っ人を申し出てくれた高村中尉の立場はどうなるうんあれ最初から決まってなかったか交換会での騒ぎの責任とかでポジティブシンキング<笑>ここはむしろ苦手意識を克服する絶好の木と捉えてみてはどうかね ?Who are you? <笑>いや、やだよいいにゃ。いかがでしょう、タイムここは、セスチナ少尉とビャーチェノワ少尉の交代という線で了承していただけませんかやれるな。はっ。うん。うん。くうん。<笑>こああ、オッケー、オッケー、いや、see。かい、いす、いす、キャプテン・オーン・ドッグ。いす、わたる、クリスカ、オン・ド・ビーチ。いや、ええー、おほん。そもそも、これは、後方戦略上の、さまざまな要請を精査した結果、決定された人員配置だ。<笑>したがって、そう軽々しく、変更などできるものではない。では、いたしかたありません。イーダル試験招待は、この競技会への参加を見合わせます。Yep, there you go. No, 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 だからこそ、事前策を提示しています。ですが、メインテストパイロットのメンタルに悪影響を及ぼしてまで協力することは、召喚の責任上出来かねます。レテンセンダー comes、uh, across as a cold son of a gun, but I gotta admit, I'm with him on this one. Also, he's got real nice cheekbones. <laughs> Just. <laughs> This, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed because by association, this is an American like, captain in a fake like, timeline in a fake video game series. But I'm ashamed that this is labeled as an American character because it's so embarrassing. Shkashi, Sandak Chui nya shibireta yo na. Antoki no kuyashso na tai no tsura. Hunto skatto shita ze. Guy fought, fought tooth and nail to have Kriska stay behind. I guess the silver lining is he doesn't have a thing for, doesn't have a thing for girls like Inya. Bakka, o my. So, yeah, so that all? Kataya, Okochamani, Krabe. I don't kiss Karan, Wagamama body, Mita, that all. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Baji, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, but you could say that about pretty much all girls in this series. Good grief, what's in the water? <laughs> so, why did he keep, uh, why does he keep Teresa and Phoebe around the beach volleyball? Oh, well, none of my business. Hmm. I bet those two are having a very interesting conversation. Anyhow, forcing those two to share a boat wasn't the, wasn't the best of ideas. Are they going to be okay? I think they will. I, th I can see them both seeing it as a spiritual, like, uh, what do you call it? Spiritual kinship. Maybe it'd be icy at first, but I think they're both straight lace, straight shooters. And I think once the ice is broken, they actually would be able to talk pretty well. And have a good respect and understanding for each other, especially because I think they both can see that they're both good pilots. You know, like, you can kind of just sense when somebody's, like, not, like, especially because, like, a good pilot doesn't have to brag about it, right? It's kind of sad how often that becomes a theme for these games, but it makes sense. Like, kind of like Enya pointed out, it's like, those who are weak and those who are afraid tend to boast. Both are no fun allowed types. Their personalities can, can, are going to mesh together as well as oil and water. I like, pray they don't cause an international incident. I disagree. Dang it. Oh, 
What's going on here for crying out loud? We're not moving an inch. Even teen school, uh, school, uh, Marum is way ahead of us now. Is it because we're going against the headwind? We get caught in some weird tidal current. In the first place, isn't the rubber boat too large for two people? Why in the world did they give us a six-seater? That is really weird, actually. I've So I took a two-person canoe across a lake once by myself. It wasn't the biggest lake, but it was a decent size, you know? It's a pretty good workout. I was very proud of myself for getting across. What I didn't realize, or like, I guess I didn't think about properly, was because when I left... Like the weather was really calm, like the air was really like tranquil, and the, and the lake was almost like glass, so it's perfect smoothness. But you know, over the course of like the 45 minutes to an hour it took to get across, because it wasn't the biggest lake in the world, um, but in that length of time, a wind picked up not much of wind, but keep, keep in mind. Trouble was, I didn't realize it was going to be an issue because it was at my back when I left. I didn't think about that until I got to the other side and turned around to go home. And I had to fight that wind. But not only did it make waves, but it caught the flattage of the boat. Now, if I'd had another person sitting up in the front and had it be more, like, sunk into the water, it would be more anchored and not as likely to get buffeted around as strongly. And it would have had another pair of hands to help push us through the water. But when it was just me and the front end was almost, like, you know, just just barely touching the surface as opposed to the back, which is, you know, in a normal buoyancy state. It made it so I kind of had to fight against my own, essentially, sail, which meant that the return trip took two hours, and I was really starting to wonder if I was going to have the energy to keep it up, because, you know, it's not like I did it, like, regularly. It was something I did on a whim. I was lucky enough that the, that the wind stayed relatively calm, and I made it back safely and exhausted. So I could see a little wind on a big boat with only two people being available to affect them pretty severely. Vincent, a little help? This effing boat isn't going to row itself, you know. Hey, if it's just one of you... Nah. Oh, no. Huh? Wait, what? Uh-oh. Oh, no, I only see the lieutenant. Alright, we might want to go check on that. Did something happen between them? Alright, I I think his mind's gonna start going to like assassination attempt on the open sea, but that's not what's gonna happen. What's the deal with the lieutenant? She's acting kind of frantic. Oh man, I've got a real bad feeling about this. Vincent, you go back to the island and let the others know something's wrong. I'll go take a look at how things are over there. No, we don't have a radio with us. Things can go haywire any minute. That's why you've got to go tell them in person. The boat's beacon will let you track our location, so send someone to pick us up. What? Do you think the lieutenant is the kind of person who would act frantic for no reason? Look around you. We've got to act now or it could be too late. Yeah, that's so weird. Why would they not give us communications methods? I'm counting on you. Fast, this better be making mountains of a, uh, this better be me making a mountain out of a molehill. <coughs> Lieutenant! Bridge is shoy. Do you see? The tidal currents are too strong. It took me too, way too long to swim over here. Seemed like you could use a hand. What happened? How's Kriska? Holy fetch! Dang it! And I, I can't see anything from down here. Kriska, now oh, fetch me. Now, it could be something as simple as dehydration or, or heat stroke, but also knowing that she's pro like, like, I've still got the, she's got the head things and the, like, the weird connection with Inya that I'm, and the looks, I'm totally still 100% believing on the fact that she is part of the same program that uh, Kasumi was a part of. If that's the case, there might be a psychic link issue, and perhaps there is an issue if they get too far separated from each other, it actually causes some kind of metabolic disaster. What? Oh, gosh. Oh, that seems really weird. Why would the... If they, but if, the, if separation were the issue here, why would the Russians allow it? See, sounds just like her. Maybe it's a flare-up of some kind of chronic disease of hers? 
脳関連ではないだろうがとにかくすぐに引き返すべきだ Agreed I agree Hand me an or すまない助かる Fetch I don't care、It's、At this point we just need help どうした、uh, Nothing She had a hard, hard day normally but now she starts blushing like an embarrassed girl in front of her crush almost like she's acting her age Hey, Tenant, I'll sit, in, I'll sit in the front row. You sit the back with Chris to keep her as comfortable as possible. Boat's gonna sway a lot. Bakata, be a chen was showy. Sumanaiga, scotch taise o kaido. So yaba, Rowell Gunso a dosta. Heading back to base ahead of us. Since he's riding a tidal current, he should make it there in the blink of an eye. Soka. Moments ago, I was cursing my luck having to wrestle against the oversized boat and two tidal currents on top, and now I'm grateful for both. And if it wasn't weird enough, here I am tag teaming with the lieutenant. An old Vincent to send a helicopter or a ship or whatever, but we shouldn't assume help's coming. Good thinking. Exactly. Even then, I wouldn't stop rowing until they got there. Yeah, so let's get a move on. They're likely gonna make it back alright, because I'm guessing that tidal current's gonna work in their face. Oh my gosh, are you freaking a squall? Really? Well, not a squall, actually. Squall can be really fast, but, like, this actually looks like it's just a tropical storm. Are you for real? Mother Effer! We need to reach Lighthouse soon or we'll be in deep crap. Timing couldn't be any worse for F's sake. What about the other boaters? Target is a very good place to take the boat and take the boat to the IA-221. It's a very good place to go. Interesting, interesting. Ha! Location beacon. GPS to me. Okay. This is terrifying, actually. It seems like the target might have been Kreska. Although, wait, except maybe not, because he said location, the look,、uh, so the target has avoided the storm, made landfall on IE 221, just as planned. We'll keep all parties under full surveillance. Weird. Okay, so the target made it to land, which might have been the other boat that was in this race for whatever reason. So the target made it to land, unless the target was Vincent, and location beacon GPS have been disabled. The target has no further means of communication with the outside world. Okay, well. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe we got washed ashore. Maybe this is like a post op of us maybe getting like, beached on an island just by the storm. <laughs> Okay. アンズルナ、ターゲットは監視下にある。今もだ。今も。でありますか。意外に鈍いな、貴様も。この状況は全て汚染立てされたものなのだ。ですがこの天候悪化は織り込み済みだ。軍の気象観測能力を持ってすれ
uh, understanding of the testing that was done with this special program. Maybe the Americans are desperate to learn just what it is they figured out with these special, like, case studies. And maybe it's just as simple as them wanting to understand and potentially utilize it as a combat tactic, especially seeing the power of Kriska and Inya's, like, combined flight model. But it also could be another one of those attempts at trying to undermine, understand, and destroy Alternative 4, because it's still in act, Alternative 4 is still in the, like, enactation plan, and we know that there were a lot of forces moving against Yuko-sensei. And if they know that she has and relies on, for whatever reason, um, Kasumi, they might be trying to understand, to undermine just what it is that makes Kasumi so dangerous or powerful. Interesting, interesting. <sighs> All right, this should do. Somehow I managed to tie up the boat to a tree, but Christ, dragging this thing all the way inland didn't number on me. <sighs> Can't rest yet. We need to find shelter from the wind and rain, but it should be okay if I take the minute to catch my breath. <sighs> oh crap, Chris, I knew I was forgetting something. This isn't the time to take it easy. Ugh. Gotta be careful, or I'll end up puking my guts all over the beach. Gosh, darn it, I haven't suffered this much since boot camp. Lieutenant, what are you doing? Hmm. What? You've gotta be kidding me. This is actually a real thing. Like, just, oh, when someone falls unconscious, like, usually it's because there's a mismatch in the body. The most often reasoning for this is actually body temperature mishandlement. Um, that's what a heat stroke is. Essentially, your body stops being able to properly regulate the temperature. Heat gets up too high. You pass out because your brain no longer functions properly. When you're in a state that's severe, it actually is very imperative that you make sure to maintain proper body control and temperature control as much as physically possible because despite being in a place that seems warm or a place that seems cool, like so say she's suffering from heat stroke, you might think, oh, well, the rain and the wind picking up has dropped the temperature, right? The problem is the body is not being able to regulate that temperature. So yes, well, the temperature drops, so could her body temperature. Remember, humans need to stay at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or was it like 36.4 degrees Celsius, I think? Um, if you stray more than a degree, like like a Celsius degree, or more than like like four or five degrees in the Fahrenheit spectrum, you immediately are going into life-threatening areas, especially when you can no longer do corrective, like stuff. Like when you have a spike in your fever because your body's trying to rid itself of a contamination of some kind, your body kind of guides you on stuff to do, bundling up in blankets because you feel a chill to help make sure the temperature gets up high enough but then also regulating and understanding that you have to sweat in order to re uh, radiate excess heat as much as possible and to try and keep it from going too high. If you're unconscious and you're, you're um, what is it, the limbic system, I think? If the syst if your, your temperature basing system is not operating correctly, then you suddenly are running a high fever and it keeps going up and up and up and you no longer control it. And then if you suddenly find yourself in a cold environment, your body will not keep things up anymore and you'll actually super freeze yourself and you'll dip down so far you can actually freeze to death in the tropics. Can actually happen. Well, that's no time to waste then. We need to find shelter ASAP, get a fire started, warm her up. Yeah, the rain and a lush jungle. Really tough environment to find burnable wood. Like, if it were dry, you might be able to find underbrush, but now the underbrush is all wet, that's a bit of a problem. Unfortunately, and here's the thing where it's coming to like the like remember I mentioned how you might have like some like etchy thrown in funnily enough the survival side of this might actually play into it and it might seem like fan service but it's actually genuinely good advice in a situation like this if you're really struggling you might just need to get yourself out of the rain like so under a tree in a cave something and then skin to skin contact because your body regulates your temperature like, it sounds silly, but here's the thing, it's really legitimate about it. Your body, as a, like a normal healthy individual, is regulating its body temperature properly. Clothing is a big part of how it keeps us warm and regulates our own body temperature, but the problem is it also forms a barrier, and if it's wet, it actually can prove negative. So, 
in a situation of survival, it actually makes a lot of sense for, for two individuals to strip down, to get physical contact skin to skin, and then one person who's in a more healthy state to like pretty much latch as much as physically possible, as much surface area as possible onto the other individual, because then they can, by association, can regulate their body temperature. Because if they're cold, their, their blood running under the surface of their skin runs up against the blood under yours and transfers that cold to you while you transfer warmth to them. Your body senses the cold, ups your temperature and compensation, continues to up the compensation and temperature, and it passes to the other individual. So as long as their blood is still pumping, they will also be getting proper circulation and it can help stave off death. Lieutenant, how about over there, on the cliffs near the beach? It would be dangerous to go into the forest dressed lightly. Walking along the beach should be fine, and I'm sure we'll find a gap big enough to fit one person. <laughs> That's a plan, then. Can you give me a hand carrying Kriska? Yeah. Yeah, but we can't, we're kind of, we're not in a position to be picky. No, so much won't wear me out, at least. Let's head, let's hit the road. I mean, the first aid kit. I'll carry it. Just realized, but I haven't been bossing her around this entire. Have I? I haven't. Haven't I been bossing her around this entire time? The weird part is that she's going along with it. She's actively supporting me. Maybe the lieutenant's still processing this whole thing. Can't blame her, I guess. Nobody expects to end up in a stranded on a desert island. It also might just be the fact that, like in this situation, rank doesn't really matter. You're both in the same straits and you have the same information. So essentially, what you're doing is collaborating, and she's just agreeing with everything you're saying. Has no bearing on her status. She's. That's why she's a great person. She doesn't let her status get in the, na in the way of functioning as a unit. She sees you guys as a unit right now. And when the unit, in this situation, you don't need a command structure. You just need cooperation. <sighs> That's got to be rough. All right. I know it's a bit of a high, a high point, but I think we're going to go ahead and leave it here. I don't want to dive too far into this because I feel like it's going to get super immersive. I think we've gone on long enough. It's a good episode so far. We start off with lots of fun and frolicking around, but now we're getting to the serious stuff. So let's save the rest of this adventure for later. However, I am still very excited to be able to see how things play out. I ultimately think that we're going to be seeing a good opportunity for the three of them to bond. Hopefully being able to like kind of overcome some of these natural barriers they've been suffering under and being able to kind of move forward which is really cool to see. It's a good, uh, it's nice to have like something kind of organic kind of putting them all together like this. I'm terrified of what the whole weird target situation is because it seems pretty clear that Kriska is the one who's the target. I, I don't see why the American slash UN would target Yui or Yua, Yuya when they have them in their ropes already. So getting Kriska isolated seems to be the point. So what on earth are they trying to do? Why are they doing this? And why did Russia kind of go along with things up until now? It just seems it seems really weird. I'm curious to see how this is all going to play out. But I guess we'll have to wait till then. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for joining me on the channel. It means a lot that you're here and that you're spending your time with me. I hope you enjoy this series and these videos as much as I've enjoyed making them. And I hope that as we continue along forward, we can continue, we can share this journey together and, you know, there's hints dropping around that the the neck the 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 um, sequel to the day after could be coming out soon. I don't know if they're planning to translate it right away or not, but lately they have been pushing translations, so we might still have another month love to go through eventually, which is always exciting. And the keeps pushing back the inevitable uh, Higarashi Numeneko, which is absolutely going to happen. But I keep being tantalized by Muv Love, <laughs> so it never seems to be coming. But we're gonna get there. Thank you so much. I hope you appreciate it. I hope you have a great start to your week. And until the next video, watch me. I'll see you next. I'll see you there.